I just want to welcome everybody to our second garden chat. I don't necessarily well um, remember anyone from our first garden chat, so I'm glad we've got some new faces here to hear all about what we're up to. Um, we're going to start our chat with a short presentation on spring ephemerals led by Sue. And after the presentation, we'll have Q&A, and then we'll have a few chapter updates and time for open discussion and folks to introduce themselves and hear about what we're doing and what you're doing. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sue. Um, we decided to, uh, this topic because uh, this is what's flowering in many of our gardens right now. Some of the other stuff isn't even up yet. Um, the bluebells are starting to bloom. I have bloodroot in bloom um, in one spot and another spot I don't. Um, these are the uh, plants that come up now and bloom quickly before all those trees start taking away their sunshine. And they are one of the great um, things for early pollinators. These are some of the first flowers that show up. They are great for the early pollinators. So the ones I saw last week have all gone back into hiding as we got that cold front through. Um, but last week there were pollinators out and looking around for whatever they could find. Um, those, well, I won't tell you what those are because we have a guess the, guess the ephemeral coming up. So we have a lot of native Maryland ephemerals. Um, I find that many of them are in our forests more than uh, the coastal plan, bright sunshine type places. Uh, they grow, they flower, and then they go away and you can lose where they are. I tend to stick a little uh, metal stake right near them so that I don't uh, forget that they're there and when I come up next year, I can see them. Um, those are some of the ephemerals not all, there's lots of them out there, um, but these are ones that I came up with and fit on a slide very nicely. So one of the reasons we wanted to do this now is if you wanna add them to your garden, this is the best time to go to the nurseries um, because once they bloom and they go dormant, the nurseries aren't gonna necessarily have them. Um, so if you're looking for native plants, uh, check them out now because otherwise um, May or June, uh, they won't be carrying them anymore. And some of them, the blood root on the left, that's what it comes up looking like. It kind of looks funky when it first comes up until it blooms. We'll have a picture of the bloom later. And this is the, the Mary Bells, which I don't see very often around here, but I have some. That's once it's fully grown and it's probably more into uh, May. It's one of the later ephemerals, but it does die back come July when it gets hot. So now we're going to play a game. So you guys are allowed to unmute yourselves because once we get through this, you're going to have to tell me what it is. So this first one, it uh, actually comes up in January or February. You most often see them in marshy, deciduous woods and not, not like tidal marshes or salt marshes, but the real wet, mucky muck that you find. There's a whole stand of them at Jug Bay that are just gorgeous. Um, very low growing plant. Initially, the flowers bloom. They don't have any leaves yet. Um, they're native from Nova Scotia all the way down to Tennessee, but not further south. It's too hot. Um, and the flower smells stinky, but that's purposeful because the type of pollinator they get are uh, flies and gnats and sometimes beetles and um, the other things like to go to stinky things. Who's got a guess? Skunk root. I'm sorry? <laughs> skunk ahead, root? Uh, skunk skunk weed. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. Is skunk. it skunk cabbage? Cabbage. cabbage. Yeah. Skunk I've never cabbage. seen it. <laughs> yeah. 
And they call it that because once the, 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 the flower is there right in the middle, okay, and it sometimes comes up through snow, but once it flowers um, and is pollinated, then it actually looks like a cabbage. And there are people that will eat this. Um, you have to like boil it three times um, <laughs> to get it to be very edible. Um, I once took a, a class for my master's degree with a professor that was really into foraging. And we had an overnight trip and we had skunk cabbage for dinner. I have never eaten it since. But <laughs> <laughs> That's really it, it, yeah, it is it is edible, but you have to do a whole lot to it before it becomes palatable. Let's put it that way. This one you often see right off of trails. It only gets to be about six inches high. You can very easily miss it. It's purplish green. Um, it grows again in nutrient rich, dry, moist to dry forest. Um, the common name. Uh, goes to the shape of the leaves. Found in most counties. Anybody have a guess? Very tiny. See the last the, line? The Anybody? last bullet. The last bullet should give it away. Yep. Any more? I think I heard Kathy say it. Any wart? Penny wart, yes, penny wart. See how easily you could miss it. It is that tiny, but it is one of those that will push up and through leaf litter, which it loves leaf litter. Um, mm -hmm. So you really have to keep your eyes open. Um, mm -hmm. On many of these slides, you'll see a map of Maryland. That comes from the Maryland Biodiversity Project. And the green counties are where they do have records of it growing. So you'll notice all but I believe St. Mary's County on the western shore. Um, and so is that as far open as the flowers will bloom? Like it's it's real tight like that? They don't uh, get right that I don't know because this was one of Lynn's slides and she's not here today. I have not seen it. Does anybody know the answer to that question? Do they open more? It is a member of the gentian family, which oh. tend to have flowers that are, are pretty tight. So um, that's a good question, Emily. I can't answer it. I'm sorry. That's all right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yes. Uh, this one is very interesting. Um, not found in Charles or St. Mary's County. The leaves are three-lobed. Okay, so its common name has to do with those three lobes, like a li your liver has three lobes. So think liver here. One of the earliest spring flowers I, doesn't really have a stem. They come right out of the basal leaves. They like drier, moist upland woods. Um, That was all, that was about it. That's what I have. Come on, somebody else. <laughs> oh, begins with an H, ends with an A. <laughs> Second letter is an E. So, oh, come on. <laughs> Round, okay, Round Lobe Hi Hepatica. There it is. Again, a lot of these plants are really, really small and low to the ground. Part of that reason is um, because the trees haven't leafed out yet, so that's where they're, they're going to find the most sunlight at that point. And an interesting point, many of them, their seeds are distributed by ants. So the seeds have an extra special little sack on them called an eliasome that has uh, stuff that the ants like to eat. So they take the whole seed back to their ant colony, eat the eliasome, and then the seeds in the ground, and that's how they spread. Many of them, but not all. This is one of my favorites, but I've never been able to grow it, even in my woodland habitat. Um, 
the leaves are what you notice first. They're um, long and slender. Um, they're fleshy and they have like purple modeling. They look like a certain kind of fish. Okay. Um, so the common name refers to the brown or purple spotted leaves. When the uh, flower comes up, it comes up as a just a thin soft <laughs> soft has a yellow, often yellow flower, bell-shaped flower. Um, often you'll see a lot of one leaf um, and no flower on it. That's probably a new plant. Um, I'm not sure whether these are out yet or not, but they're often in moist bottomland or slopes of forest, and they often make huge colonies. Anybody guess? Trillium, erectum. I'm sorry. A trillium. Tr trilliums are would be a great guess, and there are trilliums that have uh, spotted leaves, but this one is not trillium. Oh shoot! Is trout it lily. trout lily? Trout lily, yes, yay! There. Are, oh, here he is with those oh. scientific names. <laughs> I love shoot. it. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, it's actually a um, better if you're if, to use the scientific name. When I looked up the pennywort uh, this afternoon to try to find some um, more information on it, because it's not oh, one I knew, I ended up with um, hydrocodals, which are also called pennyworts. Um, and it's a whole different genus. It's not the same one. So. Uh, Isaiah, you were right. Using the uh, scientific name is perfect. You should use that rather than um, the common name. Oh, yeah, this is one of my favorites, only because it's one that I can grow. Um, little brown tip emerging from the soil. The leaf is inside, but the flowers appear, uh, appear first. Um, then the leaves slowly, slowly open, and mine actually get quite big in the, where they are. Um, moist, well-drained woodland soil. See, a lot of them are, are in that same area. The neat thing about them is when you dig them, you get a, a red sap, latex. Um, and the genus name is derived from sanguinarius, which means bleeding. Um, what I also found out is that, uh, second to the last uh, bullet point, um, it's used in toothpaste and mouthwash to fight plaque and gingivitis. And the first, if you all are old enough, you remember when ACT, A-C-T, mouthwash came out with fluoride, that red coloring was derived from these plants. Eventually, they managed to put something else in it, and now you can get it in multiple colors. But I just read that recently. Any guesses? This one should be easy. Sanguaria can canadensis? Yay! Yes, bloodroot. Very good. Sanguinaria, and I've forgotten the last one. Canadensis. There you go. Um, so I have one patch of bloodroot that looks like that picture right now. Um, another patch uh, barely have knobs coming out of the ground. The one that is blooming is in a sunnier spot, and the one that is not blooming is in a um, more shaded spot. And um, I think it probably has to do with soil temperature, but that is a very unscientific guess. You'll notice it is found everywhere except one county, not sure which county that is, in Maryland on the eastern shore. Oh. Emily was talking about these today because she was out in West Virginia where they are blooming all over the place. Um, they freely naturalize from seed, and this is one of those that the ants carry around. Um, native to Canada, Central and Eastern United States, they form uh, very large masses. Um, the interesting thing about this, I thought, is that the anthers on this plant are pink. So that is my deciding uh, field tag. If I'm out looking at something and I don't know what it is and I see pink, 
anthers than I go to this particular plant. Um, common name has to do with uh, where it was found and uh, the person who found it. Any guesses? Come on, Isaiah, give us a uh, scientific name. It's, um, it's a Or, or common. <laughs> or a common name. Virginia bluebells. Nope. But you're close. Virginia is the first part. Go, Emily. Whoa! I got my slides mixed up. I was like, I think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I am so out. sorry. I I jumped ahead because we put this in at the last minute. You are right, Kathy. I'm sorry. Okay. My apologies. I was already on the next slide. Somehow I missed this one. Yes, these are Virginia bluebells. I find this one interesting that it it doesn't show up in St. Mary's too, um, according to the map. You know, sometimes I wonder about the Maryland Biodiversity Project in that. It may be there, but nobody has reported it. And so that's, I love the, don't get me wrong, I love Maryland Biodiversity Project. But um, sometimes I think it's just we don't have people in some of these places that are doing reporting. Okay. Now we can do the one that I got. This is the one with the pink anthers and its name comes from where it was found and the person who discovered it um oh wow. yeah let me see what else i wrote down for that nope nothing um yeah this is the one that has large colonies as well like the virginia bluebells Any guesses on this one? This is the one I was talking about before. And it, it is definitely um, spread by ants. And there's a word for it, but I can't, for what plants are spread by ants. Mira microscopy, I think it is. Any guesses? Since I've now thoroughly confused you. Okay, this is Claytonia virginica, Virginia spring beauty, and I believe they're in bloom in many places. Is this the one you saw in West Virginia? Emily? Yeah, this is the one that was um, blooming everywhere in West Virginia last weekend. The bluebells weren't quite out yet, but these were everywhere. So yeah, and this picture Lynn told us was um, they're mostly the most of the ones I've seen are more like the white with the pink near the top of that page. This one was um, an uncommon yellowish one that she, uh, I believe Lynn took that picture. Okay, now we're looking at a couple left. Um, there's your toads, toad shade or trilliums that Isaiah was talking about. I believe there are four or five different kinds of trillium that are native to Maryland, I believe. Um, then there's Jacob's Ladder, Creeping Phlox, Jack in the Pulpit, um, Columbine, uh, Virginia Bluebells we talked about, and Cut Leaf Toothwort. Um, Kathy, you're, you're Native Plant Society person, right? Yes. Yeah, um, if you go to their Facebook page, uh, so many people are out there taking pictures of these ephemerals and these <laughs> early spring wildflowers and gorgeous photography out there. Oh, so that's right. a good that's a good page to visit if you want to see a lot of different kinds. Any questions? Any corrections other than my one mistake? <laughs> Very nice presentation. Oh, and there's more bluebells. I have a question about the bluebells. 
I cannot get them to grow in my yard. Anybody have any um, suggestions? I have one area, I call it my woodland area because it is under a, got a 75 year old uh, red oak. So it's very shaded. I think the problem is it is also very dry because of that oak. Um, and it's, it's near the house. Oh, they do like river bottom areas. So moist, kind of like floodplain. Um, yeah, this picture is from right along the the upper Potomac, um, like Western Maryland across in West Virginia. But I know that they tend to grow that whole kind of stretch, like Central Maryland and Western, all along those bottoms along the canal. Mm -hmm. um, I This is our property, so I've taken a few and, and tried to bring them back here in Huntingtown. Um, even along right, you know, right along the Patuxent River, and um, they don't ever make. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just the. Um, I mean, it's in a shady area and it's pretty constantly wet like this, but it just doesn't seem to. They don't seem to do as well here. Um, so I have not found the trick, Sue. These are all ones that have been there naturally, um, yeah, doing their thing. It'll be interesting to go down and see exactly where uh, they're blooming on our April 6th uh, spring ephemeral walk down at uh, uh, Mount Avertine. Yeah. Because uh, Lynn has said there's a, a large stand there as well. Hopefully they'll still be blooming. The one thing I do like about those when I do get out to see them is they start out kind of pink, pinkish and then end up blue. David and I used to do a lot of work on the CNO Canal, and this time of year, the entire area between the canal and the river was co covered with them. Um, but the question that I have is we also had huge stands of yellow trout lily every once in a while we'd see a white trout lily and we heard that those were the rare ones but we wanted to plant them here because we love them um but david asked uh the manager for american chestnut land trust if there were any yellow trout lilies at aclt and she said she'd never seen them so i know they're native to maryland but i don't i don't we don't really want to plant them here um, if they're not meant to be here. We have yeah. seen a few bluebells here, so we, we're planting more of them. Yeah, the coastal plain definitely, one of the reasons years ago that Marlene and Emily and a couple others and I started the Southern Maryland Native Plant People is that the coastal plain is different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the other garden forums we were in uh, just weren't, you know, they were recommending these native plants and I'm thinking, well, that's fine, but it's not gonna grow here. You know, it's not gonna grow or at least grow as well here. Yeah. Um, so I'm literally on a tidal creek. So uh, even my very wet areas get some salinity. Mm -hmm. which adds a whole different face to the, you know, Emily gets less because she's up the Patuxent. But I literally have have my property, a creek, a barrier island, and the bay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a whole different uh, ball of wax. And I'm still working on trying to find something to grow down near my edge. Uh, that can take the salinity. I'm making some inroads. If I could just keep the marsh elder from invading everything and the Phragmites, I would oh. be a happy camper. Yeah. Well, Lauren Hubbard, the president of the Maryland Native Plant Society, told us that we needed to find our reference ecosystem. And whatever we found there, um, we could plant here. And so ACLT is our reference ecosystem, and that does seem to help. And 
if we see like some May apples here, we'll order from um, Mid-Atlantic natives and they have got great bare rooted um, spring ephemerals, but they're all sold out now. I tried to get some last week and all gone. Already gone, huh? Yeah. Oh, and Dutchman's britches. That's right. We we, um, we discovered here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have them here. Dutchman's britches. I had been in. We have another home in Michigan, and I had Dutchman's britches oh. up there. Um, yeah. But I've not tried that. A lot of the woodland plants that I could grow in Michigan, I I cannot get to grow here. It's it's a whole different whole different yeah. eco region. <laughs> we are seventy feet above sea level here too. Oh right. No. That's true. Where we are in Scientist Cliffs, we're seventy feet above sea level. But even Oh see, I'm 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 barely nine you're, feet. You're right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I only know that because I have to get flood insurance. Oh wow. So um yeah. But it's worth it. I've got a million dollar view. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to. No complaints. <laughs> no complaints. No complaints. My family bought the property in 1979 um, and I took it over in 2010 and uh, had to undo a lot of what my father did, unfortunately. But it was a whole different ball game for landscaping it's, back yeah. in the 70s and 80s. Um, a lot of English ivy I had to take out, of course. Um, but uh, I'm I'm getting there. I'm I think I'm probably at 65 percent native now, and the wow. ones that the ones I have left uh, that are non-native are are not the 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 dirty dozen as I call it. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, I have a I have one privet left that uh, somebody told me uh, you can't take that out because it's all grown underneath the slab foundation of my shed and if you pull that all out the the shed's going to collapse i said okay <laughs> i guess it's going to stay so i just cut the flowers off every year so it never goes to to be a berry so it's not a problem good solution any more questions we still have some stuff to talk about all right emily all right we'll move into some chapter updates marlene's going to share for us. So the first thing I wanted to share with our members is one of the um, opportunities um, from National, and that's the Seeds for Education program, which is named for the Wild Ones Lifetime Honorary Director, Lori Otto. She was the founding inspiration for Wild Ones. And the grants are awarded each year to schools and youth engagement organizations to acquire native plants and seeds in order to connect youth to nature and the Wild Ones mission. The grant opportunity, I believe, opens in July. So I wanted to make sure folks were aware and had that on their radar in case you have um, youth organizations um, that may be interested in this. And I am also so happy to announce that we actually have three recipients in our chapter. Um, one is the Akakik Foundation um, with Pam Brumbley, and she's on the on the Zoom tonight, so I'm going to let her speak about that when I finish here. Um, we also have Jan Steger with Bishop McNamara High School and Esther Bonney with Nurture Natives, and Esther and Nurture Natives are a very active part of our chapter. Um, I'm hoping that these um, grant recipients will provide opportunities for our chapter to work with them on their projects if they'd like us to. But um, with having said that, if Pam, would, if you would like to unmute and um, tell us a little bit about your program there at the Akakik Foundation, um, I'm sure we'd all like to hear about that. Absolutely. And welcome to the chapter, Pam. Thank you very much. So I am the horticulture coordinator at the Akakik Foundation. We steward 200 acres of land within Piscataway Park, which is a national park on the Potomac River. We are in, located in Akakik in southern Prince George's County, right on the Charles County line. If you guys haven't been out, definitely come out sometime, hike the trails or check out the livestock. Um, so 
I'm very excited about this grant and the opportunity. Um, this summer, I'm going to be working with Prince George's County's Student Youth Enrichment Program interns. Um, we, I've worked with them the past couple of years in our historic kitchen garden and in our crop fields. So this year, we'll be transitioning and working in our new ethnobotanic garden, which is a garden that's focusing on plants that are native to this area and a lot of plants that were used by indigenous peoples for medicine, for fiber, for dyes, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so when the youth group, well, when the interns, the youth come in the summer, it'll probably be in June, we'll start designing one of the beds. I've designated a bed in the ethnobotanic garden for them to work in. So we'll focus on that space and work with them on the design and the planting and hopefully work with the chapter as well on our, our design and plant choices and things like that. That's really awesome, Pam. Congratulations. Thank you. That is awesome. And do you foresee this as a project that you would like some volunteers from the chapter to help with the installation? Um, yeah, that would be wonderful. And not, not only with that bed, but the entire garden, really. I would, I would love input, feedback, volunteering, all the things. It's a pretty large space. I think it's about 5,000 square feet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think we would like to, um, we may have some people in your area that would like to get involved. So keep us um, informed anytime you want to send us information that we can share through Facebook or on our website blog. We're happy to do that. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's exciting news. And we did not know in advance um, that anyone of these um, people who were applying for these grants, um, once the winners were announced, they were all offered memberships to their local chapters and all of the recipients opted to join the chapter. So I'm hoping we can provide them with some guidance along the way and some volunteer help. So keep your eyes and ears open for how we can help the Akakeek Foundation. Thank you, Pam. Anyone have any questions for Pam? No? Okay. What do we have next, Emily? So a couple of featured events coming up on our calendar. Saturday, April 6th is our um, Spring Ephemeral Walk at Chapman Forest, um, which is located in the Chapman State Park over in Indian Head. I believe there are still openings available for that, and you can find the link to register on our calendar, which we're gonna show you in a minute. Our next um, general garden chat will be on May 15th. And we are open for suggestions for anything you might like to hear us speak about, present on, or if you yourself have a topic that you would like to present on, we're open to that also. So I'll open the floor to see if anybody has suggestions for our next chat in May. Don't be shy, because we know you all bring a lot to the table here. And if there's something you'd like to talk about that we can help you prepare a few slides or however we can assist, we're happy to do that too. We can put our thinking caps on and um, get back to you. Okay, that sounds great. I appreciate I'm that, Amy. hearing, but my idea is whenever I think of May, I think of dogwoods um and there are so many species in the corpus genus that are really interesting that i didn't know about um mm -hmm. little shrub ones and i don't know it might be fun to hear her talk about the different species of cornus mm -hmm. i second that motion <laughs> <laughs> And you do such a good job with those, Sue. <laughs> good reason. Would, would you like a guess the cornice presentation? <laughs> we could stick along that guess the um, plant theme. I like that theme. Or we can try to change it up a little bit. We can put our thinking caps on. If anybody has interesting... Um, Cornice species that they'd like us to highlight, 
please send them our way. You know, we don't want this to all be, you know, just our information. We're welcome to information that everybody wants to share. If anybody is um, interested in creating slides or creating information for blog or Facebook, by all means, feel free. Oh, and I did want to mention one thing. I neglected to say that in addition to our short talk tonight on spring ephemerals and our walk at Mount Aventine. Kathy, can you share with us what's going on um, over your way? Because I do recall there's also spring ephemeral stuff going on over in Calvert County. Thank you. Um, we, David, my partner David and I are doing a walk at um, American Chestnut Land Trust, um, the South Side uh, Trails. And we'll be meeting at two till four on the same day as the the morning one. So we're going to be going to that, and then we're going to be running back here <laughs> to stars. Um, and we'll meet at the Southside parking lot on Scientist Cliffs Road. Um, and we'd love to see with as many members as possible. Said that was at two o'clock, Kathy. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The six spot from like the barn area. We'll meet at the barn. Um, and it should be oh, less than two miles. Last time we made it a whole half a mile. Where there was just so much to see, there was so much talking that um, it's not really a hike, it's more of a, a wander, a wander, an explore. Uh -huh. Maybe we'll take a whole caravan from Mount Aventine over to Scientist Clips. Great idea. Is that a good idea? That is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's plan. And then you can go to Chesapeake Natives and their open house and buy some. Oh, is it that same day? Like a really roundabout, you know, Southern Maryland tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that day. That's good. I hope we get good weather that day, huh? Oh, and it, for ours, I don't know about if um, for the morning one, but for ours, if it's um, like a lot of rain, it's the same time on Sunday. Oh, I don't think we've addressed that. I should ask that of Lynn. Thanks for bringing that up. And is the presentation that Jody's giving, is that still open or is that full? Yeah. No, that's open. Um, it's really good point, Marlene. Um, we had it, um, Maryland Native Plant Society had closed it because we were put having it in a small venue, but we have since moved it um, to uh, the Scientist Cliffs Community House, which is a lot bigger. So it's now opened up to um, 50 people, and I think there are only 32 that have signed up, and that is... March 30th, March 30th, at two. so that's only an hour presentation, two till three, but um, if it's a beautiful day, um, I, I don't see people wanting to come all this way for a one hour presentation, but literally we are right across the street from American Chestnut Land Trust and 24 miles of trails. Well, there are two different sides. There's the north side, um, which has a lot, lots of trails, and then the south side. So not all 24 miles, but there are a lot of trails down here. So if it's a beautiful day, then people can go to Jody's talk for an hour and then go out and look for them because March 30th, um, like Sue said, there should be a lot of them. I mean, not all of them, but some of the earlier ones we should be able to see. Great. Do you have either of those events advertised on Facebook that we could share your events or your posts? We don't. Um, they're on the um, Maryland Native Plant Society's website. Okay. And they do it by the calendar. So you kind of have to go to March 30th and then, hmm, yeah, then that, that presentation will be there and it'll show. And I think that in the beginning it was open only to Maryland Native Plant Society members, but uh, I'm pretty sure by now it's open to everybody. Okay. That's how they do it. They'll do it for just Maryland Native Plant Society for a week 
And that was a while ago. And then it's open to everybody. Okay, great. Sounds good. All right, I think we can go to the next slide, Emily. Yeah, and maybe I'll just pop up the calendar, the live calendar for this. Do you want to talk yes. about anything on the chart first before I do that? Well, so we've been trying to, we've been putting our heads together to figure out what's the best way to communicate everything that we're doing with our chapter members, because we really are out there doing quite a bit right now. And we want everything we're doing to be visible so that people can volunteer as they're available and participate. So what up, what is up here is just the screenshot of the chapter calendar from our website. And Emily's going to pull that up on the website now so we can show you um, what it looks like. Um, and I, we still need to link the calendar on the menu from our main website, but you can get to it. If you look at the URL, it's chesapeakebay.wildones.org slash chapter dash calendar slash. Emily, could you put that link in the chat for them? Yeah. yeah. So it is um, live now, and it's still a work in process. So if you see anything odd with it, let us know, because we've been going through it recently. It started out as our own calendar to keep us organized um, when we were forming the chapter, but now we've wanted to open it up so that the members can see it. It typically opens up in the month view with the current date kind of, if you look there in the center, it has like a gold bar on the top of the current date. You can click on any um, title to get more information about that um, actual event. And if you are the type who likes to see like a list view of things, you can click on the agenda in the upper right, and it actually brings it more to a list view so that you can see everything that's happening. Um, we have work days for some of the um, organizations that we're working with. We're working with the St. Mary's Animal Adoption and Resource Center to put in two native pollinator gardens there. We're working with the Bee Lab, the USGS Bee Lab up in um, the Laurel area to grow seedlings for our own chapter projects and events throughout the year. We're volunteering at Bonaterra. We held the first Bonaterra community seedling giveaway last October in St. Mary's County. So you'll see things like that where you can volunteer time if you're interested under Workday. Those events start with Workday. We've put all of our garden chats for the year, which will show up every other month. Um, outreach, if we have the opportunity to table at a large community event to um, present information on Wild Ones on our chapter, we've got those on there as outreach. Um, and actually, our, one of our first ones will be at an Earth Day event in Quiet Waters Park in the Annapolis region. Um, we do have the opportunity to table at another Earth Day event on April 20th in St. Mary's County at Summer Seat. We're looking for volunteers who may be interested in that, helping at that. I may send out an email to the chapter members to see if we can recruit some volunteers. We may do that one too. Um, on, we have a few events on here where we're working with Nurture Natives. Um, one of them is the big um, event for Maryland Day up on College Park, where all of the um, lots of campus organizations and community groups um, have space there. Nurture Natives is going to have a space to um, give out free native seedlings or plants. We're still in the process of trying to obtain some of those from different vendors. But last year, we gave away 400 tree free trees at Maryland Day, which was pretty exciting for us. Um, also on that same day, April 27th, we do have an opportunity to do a sustainability fair at the Lexington Park Library. That, again, is something we'd need to reach out and recruit um, members for because um, some of us are going to be up at Maryland Day, and we can't be in two places at once. So we'll send out a chapter um, 
an email to our chapter members about some of these events that are kind of tentative that if we can get some, recruit some help, we'd like a presence there. Some of the things on the um, calendar are just for our own information. Like there's financial reporting, date, due dates on there. Um, if you see busy on there, that's where maybe one or more administ- admin people have something on the calendar. They might be chatting with another um, chapter or they may be talking to one of our um, organizations that we're partnering with. You know, maybe it's a phone conversation that's scheduled or um, – other things. So things that are busy are pretty much things that your admins are doing behind the scenes to run the chapter. Um, yeah. And for the ones that say registration or sign up required, um, typically if you click on it, um, you'll see the details. And then we, we tried to make sure to, to put the registration link right in the event. So you can just open it up and register right here. And then if you're like me, like I forget about everything unless it's on my calendar, <laughs> you can use the copy to my calendar and send it to your, your phone calendar, or whatever you're using. Um, that was why we did this in, in addition to the actual chapter event page, because it doesn't let you add things directly to your calendar. So we thought this was a little more convenient for you to keep track of things that you plan to attend. So you can use that feature too. Right. Emily mentioned the um, Wild Ones National Calendar. So we do put our larger events that we sponsor or co-sponsor on the national calendar, but we can't put where it's discouraged for us to put our work days or our outreach events on the national calendar because the national calendar would just get too full of everybody's events. But you will see some duplication between our upcoming events that are on the left-hand side that are those that we've posted to the um, national calendar versus those in the Google calendar that's embedded. The Google calendar will be a lot more extensive with a lot more opportunities. And they should have, um, if we've updated them all, they should have like who the lead for our chapter is so that you can reach out to that individual if you have questions. Any of them that you have questions on, you can um, always send an email to our chapter email. Um, I think it's, is it wildonschesapeakebay.gmail.com? Yeah. And that link is on our website. Um, But if you haven't been to our website, go to the chesapeakebaywildones.org website. We've got um, our partners on there, which lists all of the organizations that we're currently working with who have given us little spiels about, you know, their, um, about themselves and what we're doing together. Um, We're pleased to have all the the three native plant nurseries in our region, Bonaterra, Butterfly Alley, and Chesapeake Natives as members. Um, So feel free to scroll through that to see some of the good things we're doing, some of the people we're working with. Um, Emily, if you could go up and just quickly show them news, our news. Yep. So news, um, this is like a blog. So if anybody likes to write blog articles, you can send us information and we're glad to put them on the website. Um, we get these this information from a variety of areas, um, and we've been posting about advocacy, including the ban of the invasive plants in Maryland. We're trying to put our um, projects that we're working with other um, partners with. If you go up, Emily, I think our work at the top of the screen takes those um, – projects that we're working on that we've included in the blog and puts them under our work page. So you can see some of the things that we've been doing, some of the folks we're working with. So we're real excited to share this information to kind of keep the chapter members informed. And with that, I know we're running short on time. I wanted to give anybody who's on the call an opportunity to introduce themselves um, you know, let us know any of your thoughts. And did we, looks like we lost somebody. Who Did someone have to leave? Oh, okay. 
So Isaiah had to leave, but um, it would have been nice to hear from his perspective, but that's good. Zay is with the College of Southern Maryland, and we are doing a little bit of work with the College of Southern Maryland and their EcoHawks team. Um, so I was hoping he could give us an update, but unfortunately we ran a little bit before he could give, give his little spiel. So is there anybody else who would like to unmute and tell us who you are, what you'd like to see out of the chapter, um, anything like that before we close the meeting? Um, the website looks really good. I'll look forward to reading the articles on there and just browsing around on it. You guys are doing Great. an awesome job. And um, yeah, I, I stay mostly in St. Mary's County. I'm involved in the Leonardtown Library front yard native garden. It's kind of my, my pet project, <laughs> the place I like to be along with my own trying to go from you know, 95% non-natives, trying to get that number down, switch to more native plants. So that's, it's a job, but it's coming along. So I appreciate your, your guidance and all the information that you provide. Yeah, keep the good work. Um, it's really, it's impressive how much you've gotten done. Yeah. Well, we, we hustled between October and December. <laughs> to get the chapter charted because we knew there had been members, you know, since the beginning of January, if not longer, of last year. And we wanted to try to get some stuff out there for the members. And um, we really would like to hear what the members would like. Um, I would be excited if folks are in an area where they know of other parks or forests or open areas where we could take tours, um, if anybody is into that sort of thing. Um, anybody who'd like to write for the Facebook or for the website blog, I'm always interested in, you know, posting information. Um, but yeah, we just like to get folks involved and keep them informed. There is a you have an idea. stand of pink lady slippers. Oh. That, because <laughs> the secret. So I don't know what we would do if... Um, we could meet at this particular park and then we'll just sneak people <clears throat> back to see we'll them. You have to blindfold them. And blindfold you, turn, uh, turn us <laughs> around. We'll, we'll, we'll have to meet somewhere and you'll take us by van blindfolded. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but people, people know that they don't transplant. No. Yeah. yeah. Because you have to have all the right soil conditions and yeah but people don't know that i mean right, yeah so they know, steal right? them anyway we yeah. know but the other people don't yeah. i saw them I have, once on a red a, mountain trail so cool. i have a single lady slipper in my woods oh well we're yeah. trying a, maybe soon you'll have more maybe i don't know i've been watching it for a couple years i have it marked and i go out there every year and i take a little picture of it and i'm like please i talk to it but yeah yeah we stumbled on it by accident we have quite a few interesting things around here um you know i stumble on these onesie twosies and i mark them and i keep an eye on them but um what's a onesie yeah. what's that what's a onesie twosie one of this or two of that, you know. Not, oh, not a specific name. Let me think of the scientific. But what's the Latin name for that? I'll get back with you on the Latin name. Unas <laughs> dosis. No, that's no, like Spanish. That's Mexican, Latin. I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? Um, is there anybody else on the? I can't see my chat. Has my something has over. Yeah, Let's see. Really yeah, we heard from Who Sam. We haven't heard from Shelly. Shelly, did you want to unmute and I and introduce yourself? Hi. Uh, yes. He hello. Um, just uh, sitting in and seeing how this organization's going. I had missed the first meeting because I was in Africa and uh, wouldn't let me connect. Uh, it was a uh, uh, illegal place, I guess, to connect from. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be in Africa for our third meeting, so I'll be using that one. So. 
Yeah, so we were we were in Ghana. So I, I specifically cool. said not not available to to connect from there. So maybe where you're going, it will be possible. Yeah, yeah. if you let us know ahead of time, there actually is a check mark that says only allow people in from the United States and Canada. So uh, <laughs> we could have unchecked that for you. Oh, but, uh, oh you really? They really would have been okay. <laughs> in um, South Caicos, and I never had a problem with Zoom, and oh. all the other Zoom, um, while we were away, we had no problem, but we got that, that message, the same message, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 maybe we should make it a routine to just uncheck that. That's probably a setting that National has set, uh, because we are using National's um, Zoom. Maybe we, we will discuss that, Marlene. <laughs> but I, I was able okay. to watch. I was able to watch the recorded version later. So good. Yes. Oh, well, good. good. I was able to good. get to that. I guess that's through the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So that's on our YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah. So Bill's our videographer, and he takes our um, recordings of our meetings and slices and dices them, so we can put it out there for everybody else. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. And, and <laughs> Shelley does a lot here in the. I know at least in Charles and St. Mary's County, I don't know how far your reach goes, Shelly, um, but you work on a lot of things I know. don't know if oh, you want to share any of them with my. Well, my, my husband is on uh, the um, Port Tobacco uh, Conservancy, and he also works with Charles County Conservancy doing surveying lands, and he's also on the board of Sierra Club. So I'm kind of tag along with all of that. And I think he also does some uh, website work for Audubon, uh, for Southern Maryland Audubon. So I kind of just get involved here. Here he is. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm having a meeting at the Indian Head Senior Center on uh, Friday and with the Master Gardeners because um, they put they did a nice garden at the Clark Center. And I thought there might be a spot for uh, a nice little row of natives. Um, so we're having a, another meeting on uh, Friday over there. If anybody wants to attend, I can, I'll send you the information. Um, but I've already delivered a table, and the Sierra Club, uh, as part of their food security, likes to put in these little community gardens. And typically they're kind of low to the ground, made out of castle wall block. But for the uh, senior centers, we put in nice tabletop ones so you can get underneath of it with a wheelchair or you can just stand instead of having to stoop. I like that, too. I'm going to make one for myself. Uh, so <laughs> you know, anyway, that's the one thing I want. I think I told you about that um, a long time ago. Anyway, it's uh, we're going to try to get them up and running by May 1st. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm out of town on Friday. Mm-hmm. So, But I wish you the best. I hope it goes well. Yeah, they would be interested in in putting uh, a, a there's a spot for like a row of of native plantings could could go there by the it's a, like a walkway up to the um, uh, behind where the garden table is, but uh, next yeah. to the walkway that uh, people used to go up to the actual center, um, but. Uh, you know, we are kind of uh, uh, novices. Uh, we've been trying to convert our yard all to, to native plants, and we have a small meadow planting, and, uh, but we are, you know, not experts, you know, uh, as far as being able to advise them what to put in there um, if, they, if they decide to go that direction. It would be nice to have some help from wild ones, maybe. <laughs> Well, I, I'm sure you're in good hands with the master gardeners, but if there's anything wild ones can assist with too, just reach out to us. Okay, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. And nice it to seems... see you back from vacation. <laughs> it's good to be back. Marlene, I think, is it on the Wild Ones National webpage that they have um, plans? I go to a lot of websites. and Oh, I they do have garden one. They do have garden garden designs on wild ones, and there is Mm -hmm. one for the Washington, D.C. region. Mm -hmm. And one of our members, or actually Lynn Wheeler, she 
is kind of a native plant guru here in Charles County. She's going to take the DC region's plan and make sure all the plants on it are appropriate for Southern Maryland. Because if you think about the DC region, um, it's more it was Piedmont. more, what's that? It's more Piedmont. Yeah. So I think that's what she noticed. She has reviewed it, but she hasn't come back with her suggested um, substitutes, if you will. So um, I think she's going to work on that when time permits. But that that we would have be a, a good lot place of to start, right? If you're looking for ideas of what plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. In projects. Yeah, and we have a lot of talent in our um, in our chapter. You know, we have master gardeners, we have watershed stewards, we have master naturalists. Um, what am I missing, folks? Because I know we have a lot of, I know we have a lot of um, talent in our group. Um, we have the native plant nurseries. Um, so just keep that in mind that. Um, we have a lot of resources. Okay, we'll see what the master gardeners say, and uh, and um, maybe let your organization know if there's any help needed installing. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks. All right. With that, is there anything else? It was great seeing everyone this evening. Um, I kind of enjoy the small group meetings. I think we get to chat a little bit more. It's a little more personal. Um, hopefully, though, we'll grow our meetings, you know, over time. And um, appreciate all the ideas people brought forward. Yeah. And the, thank you, everyone. Have a good week. Stay warm with the cold front coming. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. I'm, I'm heading to Michigan where it's supposed to snow. No oh. way. Oh. Safe travels. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.